So MEM0, uh, formerly known as uh, Embed Chain, uh, have, uh, they have recently open sourced their memory package. So in this recording, we'll see how they are thinking about memory. And if you are following my recordings and blogs, you'll see I have been stressing on memory for a long time now, right? So MEM0 is calling their package the memory layer of personalized AI. Now, I um, think about memory as system of systems. Uh, it's a, it's a uh, union of many different types of memory and each of them acts like a subsystem. For example, entity memory, semantic memory, episodic memory and all. In, uh, and each of this memory has um, a, a particular uh, goal that they are they uh, serve and although they are uh, independent of each other but each of them can feed to uh, the other uh, type of memory right so that's how i i think about memory and i have written about uh, the memory subsystems earlier mem0 looks like is focusing more on uh, the uh, the the memory instance uh, the memory uh, solution that mem0 is uh, uh, as uh, uh, released uh, looking at that it looks like they are focusing more on personalization so how i can remember the user preferences and when the same user comes back to interact with the language model how can I remember some of the uh, preferences of the user from the past interactions and can make the current conversation more contextual to the user and make it more hyper-personalized for the user? That's what I felt the focus on, right? How the current memory module works uh, in MEM0, I uh, can looked at the code and then put into a visualization like this. So the user interaction messages, once it goes into mem0 memory, it first does a memory deduction, right? So from the interactions, it tries to deduce uh, the facts from the interaction, the preferences of the user from the interaction. And so th these, are, these are extracted memory from the current interaction. Then there are some existing memories that it stored previously. Both this gets uh, goes as an input to a memory consolidation process, right? So the memory consolidation process is powered by an LLM. The memory deduction process is also powered by an LLM, right? So here, um, if, if you are using OpenAI with uh, MEM0, the default model is used as GPT-40. So GPT-40 does a memory consolidation. Basically, it looks at the extracted memory and the existing memory and sees if they are uh, talking about a similar thing or same thing. It will not add a new memory, but it will update an existing memory, right? So it's kind of a function call that is happening here uh, based on the memory consolidation. It decides whether to call an add function or an update function. So in fact, there is a delete function also. So based on this, uh, if there is a delete button, it should be done for a uh, memory, it will uh, call the delete function. But it's basically a function calling. Right? So if it's a new memory, that means the memory, deducted memory or the extracted memory does not match with any of the existing memory. It will add memory. Now, when the add happens, there are two types of stores. One store, I call it a semantic memory. Here they are using quadrant as the vector database where they convert the um, that memory into uh, embedding and the payload the is the actual text of the memory is stored in the semantic memory. So if you see, this is the vector. This is the uh, embedding of the interaction and this is the payload, the actual uh, things that uh, the memory deduction 
uh, extracted from this instruction, the extracted memory goes in the payload. If it's, uh, and, and um, this payload goes into your episodic memory, which they named as, as history, where you have the memory ID. Uh, so initially when there is an add, there is no previous value. The new value is nothing but the payload. Uh, then event is whether it's a add, uh, delete, or update, and timestamp, uh, and all, right? So this captures the the history. This is like a timestamped um, memory. It's like, think about it as a log, right? Like our human memory is also a uh, log, right? So it's kind of an append only, right? Um, so it, it uh, um, as the memories come in, it gets appended here, but the latest uh, memory that the like whatever has been um, needs to be added or updated uh, that semantic memory sits here so when a new interaction comes in right a new interaction comes in first it checks in the semantic memory right to see um, what are if if this matches with the semantic memory and then it can use whatever has been stored in the payload as the memory to answer. I did not see how, um, I did not see an example uh, in mem0 where they are using the episodic memory, but since they're storing the episodic memory, the, for any new interaction, the semantic memory and the episodic memory can be actually combined to make it more powerful, right? But overall, this is how it is working. Let's actually go into the code and see this in the code itself, right? So let me open the code. So this is a mem0 uh, package. I git cloned it. I uh, forked it and git cloned it and uh, wrote one uh, program to store the memory, right? So I just uh, put the open API key here. Um, then this is where I'm initializing the memory, the mem0 memory. Now, if I go to this memory, you'll see how the add function is working. Let me go to the, okay, before that, as I was saying, the default um, vector store is quadrant. This is the vector, uh, default uh, vector store, which is used to store the, the semantic memory, right? Semantic memory in our diagram here, right? So the add, let me go to the add. So this is the add function, memory add function. First thing it does is, um, okay, the filter we'll talk about later. The filter is um, by which you can filter if, if uh, a particular user has logged in, right? I can filter with his or her user ID to extract or uh, retrieve the memories uh, past memories of that user on uh, ID only, or if it's an agent or a run ID, right? So I can uh, filter it based on any of this three, right? Now, the deduction part, memory deduction part that is talking about, right? As it comes, the memory deduction part. This is the prompt that is used to reduce the memory. It takes the data and the metadata. Now, if you look at it, right? deduce the facts, preferences, and memories from the provided text. Just return the facts, preferences, and memories in bullet points. Naturally, this is the user input. If there are any uh, uh, metadata like user ID, agent details, right? this goes here. And finally, the deduced facts and preference and memories are extracted. Right? That is what is being done in the add memory. Right? Let me go back to the add memory. Right? So the add memory we are here, right? So memory is deducted, right? So once this is, uh, once this prompt, so this prompt is now used to extract the memories from the current text, right? This is the, so here GPT-4 is being used, right? With the generate response. So after this prompt is executed, I'll have my extracted memories here. The existing memories <clears throat> are extracted from the vector store right it's uh <clears throat> so it's basically uh the query that is uh that came the interaction right that has came that, that came the interaction message with that embedding the 
top five uh, matches are extracted as a existing memory from your the quadrant database, right? From the quadrant vector database. Um, so the existing memories <clears throat> are put into a list, right? And then um, it, it, this, it, it is just serializing it with the ID, text, and score. And finally, <clears throat> this function is where the serialized existing memories and the extracted memories are sent. And this is where the memory consolidation is happening. The memory consolidation is happening in this function. If I click on this function, you will see this is the function. And this is again a prompt, right? In the prompt, it is saying that you are an expert at merging, updating, and organizing memories. When provided with existing memories and information, your task is to merge and update the memory list, right? And it gives some guidelines how to merge uh, the memories, right? If if the memories are, uh, if the new memory is uh, matching with the previous memory, right? So this is where the um, where your uh, consolidation is happening. Let me go back to this again. And so what we have seen so far, we have seen that memory direction where we extracted the memories, then we extract the existing memory from the vector database. Then we, here we are uh, getting the prompt for the uh, memory consolidation, right? And the tools that I say, right, it's a function calling tool. So add memory tool, update tool, and delete memory tool. These are the three tools that are passed. If you see, these are the schema of the tools, right? That this is the add memory tool key. And this is the key for this add memory tool, right? Um, so this is being passed to the, uh, to the memory uh, consolidation uh, phase, right? So the memory, um, so where you were here, right? <clears throat> So we pass the tools, right? So the, now the LLM is again called the generate response, right? With the uh, messages, this is the deduction, uh, the consolidation prompt, these are the tools, right? And now if the, based on the function calling, right? Based on the LLM now is deciding whether it's a, it needs to consolidate or it's a new memory, right? <clears throat> based on that, it will um, call the, uh, respective function, right? If it is add memory, it will create the memory. If it is update memory, it will update the memory, right? So in the create memory tool, we'll see that it is inserting into the vector store, right? The new memory, if it is update, let me go back there. If it is update, <clears throat> then it is, uh, it is doing a uh, update. Uh, it is getting the previous, so, in the history, it will put the uh, current value as uh, previous value. And then in the vector store, it will update the uh, the existing, the me memory ID it will get uh, updated with the new payload, right? So this is, uh, so after, whether it's update or add, add right? It uh, adds it to the history, right? Which is, which is our history table. This is our history, history table, right? Um, in the insert also, you'll see that at the end, um, it actually inserts into the history table. So if I go to the uh, create memory tool, it is adding to the history as well. That's how it is working, right? Now we'll see it in, uh, we'll run it and see the data. Right? So let's say the first user data, I am, so this is interaction that I'm, uh, I read, uh, I'll say I read a lot of books. I read a lot of books. I love uh, books on neuroscience, right? So this is the interaction, right? This is what I'll send to the memory, right? So if you see this user data, I am going to send it here, right? So memory.add user data and user ID is, let's say I give my name here. And now, okay, so this one I will comment for now. I was just checking how it is able to search the relevant memories, right? So if I run this now, let me run it. It will update both the semantic memory and the apacidic memory, right? So the semantic memory is powered by quadrant, as I mentioned, and the default 
location of the quadrant database is let me show you that also the default location is uh, temp quadrant right and for the storage the default location is if i go to the db path uh the db path is the let's see where i saw it this is the db path right for the uh default memory which is your home directory concurrently with mem0 so now that i have run the right so let me go to table plus so this is my quadrant database right so here it has uh, in binary format right the because this is the point right if you have worked with quadrant quadrant converts into a uh, point right so the point structure is like this right so the vector and the payload right that's what has gone here and if i go back and look at the history db you'll see in the history this is being stored right so since it is the first time i did there is no previous value it extracted this as the memory that reads a lot of books right so reads a lot of books uh, this is the new value and the event is add right now let us run the program again and this time let's say i read uh, i read a lot of books i also like to read books on ai and data science right let me add this ideally they should in the semantic memory since it's a similar kind of memory uh in the semantic memory it should be only one right so i go here no it actually put multiple i think this is actually it is regarding as a new memory so if i go back to the history i should also see here um yeah so okay so one memory it did consolidate so reads a lot of books especially on ai and data science this memory id and this memory id are same right this was our initial memory right previous value was null right and it consolidated with with this one where it said reads a lot of books especially uh, on ai and data science and this was the previous value from this text it actually found out two more memories also let's see what this likes to read books on ai so basically it is um further uh, uh like spreading out in, into uh, ai and data science right these are the two memories but it also found that this particular uh, is uh, related to the previous memory also which is this right read a lot of books especially on ai and data science reads a lot of books right that was my previous memory so this is where the memory consolidation happened uh, with the previous memory but it also extracted uh, two more memories right so this is uh, how uh, it is uh, implemented right now i am going to research a little more i have some thoughts if i would have uh, implemented this memory consolidation i would have done it as an offline asynchronous approach so the initially when i add it i would have made it a more like an append only but then later a consolidation process runs asynchronously and i would have brought in some human in the loop to ensure that the consolidation is happening correctly or not right? because still llms are non deterministic but i know over a period of time models will only get better that's all i wanted to show today as part of this uh, recording i am going to spend more time on memory mem0 and other type of memories also and will uh, share as i learn more thank you